So we have a regular polygon, all the sides are congruent, all the interior angles are congruent, and these distances are now all congruent. We've now formed a bunch of triangles, and we can see that these triangles are all congruent to each other by side, 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 side. Yep, all of them are congruent. How would you describe, what kind of triangles are these, classifiably? They're isosceles triangles. That's a useful fact for us. It's going to save us some information later on. So if they're isosceles triangles, that means these base angles are congruent which means these angles must be congruent to each other. So therefore, what happened to my interior angle when I drew this line in? It's, got, it's been bisected. That's a useful inf piece of information if we want to find what, out what that angle is. We can, you know, we can find the interior angle and just cut it in half. Okay. So I want to find the area of this thing. Well, it seems sensible to find the area of just one of these triangles and then multiply by however many triangles we have here. I think in this picture there's seven, yes? So I would say, let's, let's go ahead and write that out. Our area formula should be, I'm going to put this on a sticky note because I'm going to have to use this one more time today. Sorry. Oh, that's bright. I'll go red. Dan living dangerously, Mr. Duncan. Area is equal to, and uh, the number of triangles, that's the same as the number of sides, yes? yes. Usually we represent number of sides of polygons like with the letter N, is that correct? So I'll just say a uh, number of sides. And I'll, I'll write that as n later on, but just the first time we need to know what that is. So the number of sides times the area of one of those triangles, which is one half base times height. All right, so that's a decent formula. That's a working mm -hmm. formula. Looks kind of ugly, but it's our first iteration, right? Still in beta mode, right? We're still developing a little bit. Uh, let's see what we need to go and harvest. Well, the base is going to be the length of any one of these sides. So the name we call the side, whenever we have a congruent or regular shape, we just call it the letter S. Like on a square, instead of saying base times height, we say S times S, right? So we'll use the letter S here. The height of my triangle, I'm going to need to draw that in. That is going to go from the center, and it's going to be perpendicular to the side. And guys, that's always the rule for base and height. They must always be perpendicular, whether it's for polygons or quadrilaterals, parallelograms, kites, rhombi. They all have to have, if you're going to find the area of them, if they're using a base height formula, those bases and those heights must make a 90 degree angle. If they don't, you're not using a base and a height. You're using a base and something else or a height and something else. We're going to have a name for this. What are we going to call this particular height? Any ideas? Starts with an A. Ap this is the apothem. Or as some people like to call it, the apothem. Um. But that's something that I think crosses the road in front of your car. Look, mom, an apothem. <laughs> the cutest apothem I've ever seen. <laughs> so we will say, I say apothem because it sounds a little more classy. So we call it that because it's actually measuring a length in the polygon. Right? This is a length of a polygon, right? It's not the height, well, not quite, but it's kind of it's the height of a triangle, but it's not the height of our polygon. You can see that, yeah. So we we have it has this unique name, and it must go from the center, and it must go to a side, and it must be perpendicular, right? So we're going to rewrite this equation with our new pieces in place. So again. Area is equal to, and this time it's going to use n for the number of sides, right? n is the number of sides times one half. And now instead of base b, I'm going to use the letter s. And instead of height, I'm going to use the letter a. Okay, so we've we've cleaned up our equation a bit. Yeah, it's uh, it's got the more pertinent value uh, variables being used, s and a, and n instead of number of sides. That's condensed our sentence down a bit. I think we can actually condense this down a bit more. So we're going to condense it down one more time. Um, and here's what I want to point out. Notice we're multiplying all these terms. That means that we can move them around at will, and it's going to give you the same product. 3 times 2 is the same as 2 times 3, correct? So the order doesn't matter. That's commutativity property. It's a commutative property. I'm going to move the 1 half and the apothem out front. It doesn't change the overall answer, right? It's still going to be the same just organizing them a little bit, little bit more. And I'm going to group together n times s. Now 
Now, this doesn't give us a different answer, right? It's the same end result. It's just ordering them. And here's my question. N is the number of sides, for, and S is the length of one side. What is that really finding if I multiply S by the number of sides I have? It's really just the same as finding the perimeter, isn't it? So we can condense this product in here down just to the letter capital P. So here is our final equation. The area is equal to 1 half times the apothem times the perimeter. So this is the standard form of the equation for finding the area of a regular polygon. Now can you use any of the others? Sure, they're all equivalent. These equations are equivalent to each other, so it doesn't matter which one you use. But this is the most elegant one we have currently. So that will be the one we use in class. And we need to write that down here. Area, one half times the apothem times perimeter. So now, really, when we find the area, we just need two things. When we have those two things, we can then use it to find area. We need an apothem, we need a perimeter. So that is our goal from now on, to find those two pieces. All right, we need a way of doing so. So let's talk about that. We need to find um, apothem or perimeter, usually. I, the problems that you're going to be doing when it comes to area, you're going to have possibly one of three scenarios. Either you're going to be given the perimeter and you have to find the apothem. They give you the apothem, you have to figure out the perimeter. Or they give you some other length and you have to figure out both. So those are the three possible scenarios. Notice what kind of triangle we have right here, folks. What kind of triangle is that? It's a right triangle, possibly scalene. It's definitely a right triangle, though. And so that means if we have a right triangle, we can use trig ratios to find any missing sides we need. In order to use a trig ratio, what else would we need to know besides one of the sides? We have to have an angle. So that's the first thing we're going to go after. Let's talk about this polygon and its angles. All of these vertex angles are congruent. We talked about that. Let's just label them as theta. Okay, that'll be our vertex angle. And in a polygon, since it's at the center, we're going to call that our central angle, just like we did with the circle. Now, how many of these uh, vert or sorry, central angles do we have on this particular shape? Six or seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then that would have been seven. I just don't want to write it in yet. So there's seven on this particular one because there's seven sides, right? Well, what do we know about these angles? What should they add up to? Uh, 360. Excellent. So if we know they add up to 360, to find out the measure of one of them, we would divide by however many sides we have. That will get me the angle I need. Now, that will get me the essential angles. What's happening to the essential angle right here? So really, this angle is theta divided by 2. Very good. So if we want that angle, we're going to take theta, once we find it, and divide it by 2. So we've talked about all of the major pieces of a regular polygon except for one, and it's, it, we talked about it briefly, this length right here, which is the same as these other legs, of course. We've talked about this as part of this triangle. We've also talked about it, as, I guess, as a hypotenuse of this right triangle. But as a part of the polygon, we actually would call this the radius of my polygon. Why do you think I'd call this a radius? What does, what does it make you think of? You hear the word radius, what comes to mind? Half. half, maybe, half a diameter, or a circle. How does a circle play into a, a polygon that's regular, that has a center? Not bad. Not on the inside, but... Ah, and it would pass through each of these corners if I drew it in. It would, it would literally circumscribe all of those corners. So this would be the radius of that circle. Okay, so I could give you the radius and you'd have to figure out these other two pieces. Or I could give you the apothem and you'd have to figure out this one piece. So just be aware. Okay, you have to use trig ratios. So most often you're probably going to use just one of the trig ratios. But you could, you, you could be asked to use the other two as well. So be ready for that. All right, so now we know what we need to do. We need to know what our given is. And then we need to know what this angle is so we can figure out our missing pieces. And that means you are now ready to see the short list. This is the list of the things you need in order to find the area of a regular polygon. And I'll let you write those down. First one says, list your known. List your known information. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm always going to start off by putting this A and P and putting a box around it. This is where I'm going to put all my information as I gather it. Sometimes I get something right away and I put it in immediately. Sometimes I have to do some math, do some calculations to find one of these pieces, and then I write it in. Once you've listed any of your knowns, the next thing we have to do is we need to find an angle. And you already walked me through how to find this angle. You said take 360 divided by the number of sides, and that'll get me theta. But in order to find the angle we're going to use, we have to take theta and divide it by 2. And that gives us this angle here, part of a right triangle. So at this point, we have one of the side lengths. Right, we've been given something up here. We know uh, this angle, so now we can use trig ratios on this right triangle to figure out what other missing pieces we need. So we're going to use trig ratios to find the missing parts that we don't already know, whichever part or parts those are. So that's being labeled as A for apothem. Why did I call this half S? Because it's it's only right, it's half the side length. Please be aware that's the thing people screw up the most. They forget that that's only half of the side they need. So you have to keep that in context as you're working these problems. I can try and zoom in, sure. Let's see what I can do. Let's see.